Hi, I'm Mila Martinico and welcome to my kitchen. Today we are going to make something that I would just make on a, you know, Sunday afternoon if I wasn't working at the restaurant or um, for us, Monday. We love to have like an Italian family dinner and it's huge in our culture and it's something that I love to pass down to our kids. And so I'm going to teach you how to make just a simple tomato sauce, easy, not complicated at all. We're going to make it with some pappardelle and I'm going to teach you how to make some real authentic yummy crusty Italian bread. So um, the first thing that I'm going to start off with is actually a secret ingredient and something that I keep in my kitchen all the time and it is garlic confit. Um, confit just means something that's like cooked in fat and for me, I mean at the restaurant we use this in so many different um, recipes and sauces and it's something that I always keep on hand, which I think I already said. So the first thing we're gonna do in a baking dish, we're gonna dump some garlic. Um, the cool thing about this is that you don't even really need um, measurements because it's kind of like an eyeball thing, which I think is like huge in Italian kitchens. So we're just gonna dump it into a baking dish. This is my cute little Pyrex. I collect Pyrex. We're gonna dump olive oil on it and just cover it. I already preheated my oven to 300 degrees. So um, what's gonna happen is it's gonna cook like low and slow in there. And we will probably leave it in there for about two and a half hours. If it's a really lazy day, I'll put it on 275 and let it go for like four or five. So it just depends. Oh, it's leaking out of the lid. How perfect. <laughs> Okay, okay, this looks pretty good. They're all pretty much covered. And then I'm just going to, wow, this is a mess. My grandmother would be freaking out. Um, we're just gonna cover it with some fresh herbs, which right here in the kitchen, I like to always keep some thyme. Just gonna kinda smoosh it in there. We're gonna put salt. So look how simple that was. We're gonna stick it in the oven. There we go. Now we're gonna move on and make our bread. Am I good, Jonah? Yeah, it's been filming, so. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> great, okay. So I filled up my kettle, and I like using a kettle because, the electric kettle, because I can like set exactly how many um, degrees that I want the water to go to. So you want it at like 111-ish degrees. Um, basically, it's just really warm water. Now, that's gonna heat up. We're gonna come over here and our mixer. We're going to learn how to work it. Okay, so we're gonna do our flour first. We're gonna do, I'm gonna make a pretty big, good size loaf. Um, we like carbs, okay? like. We like carbs, so we like a bigger loaf. So I'm gonna go in here, dun dun dun. I've always wanted to do this on camera. One. I think I've got, what, six? Oh my God. Two. Okay, let's do it how I would really do it. Three. Four, five, six, and a quarter. All right. And now into that, I'm gonna put, I have my little cheater sheet, which is like the original recipe for my recipe box. When I was trying to figure out how to like make my nonna's bread when we moved here and I was like really, really homesick. So I'm gonna do two teaspoons of salt. The funny thing is, is that at the restaurant, we make um, focaccia, you know, multiple times a day, 
whether it's me or whether it's manager Stacy. And um, we don't make this bread, but this is like my nonna's bread and the bread that I grew up with um, at the restaurant and what they made. And the rest, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> ah, there we go. Okay, um, anyways, that bread we do all by hand and we don't use a mixer. So if you don't have a mixer, and to be honest with you, I bought this mixer because I thought it was so cute and cuter than my KitchenAid. But if you don't have a mixer, feel free to use your hands, um, a wooden spoon. Either way, it all comes out the same. Like, it's not hard to mess this up. You know what I mean? So, watch I mess this up. But anyways, we're gonna just kind of get this all mixed up. Is it supposed to make that noise? That does not sound normal. I've legit used this like five times. And if this thing is broken after five times, watch, I'm gonna have to buy a dang KitchenAid anyways. Okay. Oh, apparently I had to warm up. <laughs> That's exactly how I feel in the morning. When I get out of bed and I'm like, oh, my back, it just needs to warm up a little bit. Oh my God. <laughs> that does not sound normal. My husband's over here like, <sighs> it's fine. Okay, so the salt and the flour is getting mixed. Meanwhile, I feel like we should get our yeast mixed up and I should have grabbed this already. And here we go. We're gonna put in three cups of our <laughs> warm water. I don't think I'm ever gonna be like deemed as a professional. I'm just like a hot mess restaurant owner, chef, cook lady. Okay, we're almost at three cups and there it is. That's good. Clean up the mess that I'm always making continuously. Okay, here's our yeast. We're just gonna put it in there. Let it get a little frothy. Should I stir this? I should stir this. I mean, eh. Hmm. Yeah, I'll stir it. I usually like when I do it by hand, I just make like a little well in um, the flour and do that. Okay, it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna see the yeast is already starting to like form a really pretty um, like bloom. I'm just gonna start pouring it in slowly. Not fussy at all, you know. Um, you know what, this is my real life and this is how my life is, okay? Okay, now we're gonna let it go. I'm gonna say that we're gonna let this knead for like, maybe three minutes. You don't want to like over knead it. If you over knead it, it'll get rid of all these like really beautiful um, bubbles and you know, you want it to be like cracky and craggly and crispy. So um, I don't want to over knead it. I'll show you the consistency of what it looks like. In here, I don't know, Jonah, you want to come and like see what the consistency looks like in here? It is a pretty wet dough, and you want it to be um, wet. So don't get nervous. We're gonna be fine. Gosh, I love this smell. It smells so freaking good. And it just, I don't know. I was just thinking about growing up in the restaurant and like my sweet little nonna, or even my uncle Mark Antonio, um, making the bread because as she got older she really couldn't you know 
get down in there because she used to make it in this huge bowl and you know we would all sit in it as kids and spin and it literally was so big it had to sit on its own like clean trash can and she would just be like hunched over making bread for the customers and so that's kind of like something that I have going on at my restaurant too um, just keeping that you know whole vibe alive but god there's nothing like fresh bread out of the oven slathered with heaping pools of melted butter so next we're gonna act like I know how to take this off <laughs> <For real. laughs> okay <laughs> I did it wash my hands a little bit all right so this is where we're at it is still pretty wet but it's firm you don't want like I said you don't want to over mix it because if you over mix it it's really gonna it's not gonna be pretty the texture is not gonna be what we want so we're gonna go in here grab a kitchen towel and we're just gonna put it right over it's beautiful there we go actually I think I usually put a little olive oil on top. I'm gonna put just a little olive oil on top. There we go. Just like a little drizzle. And then I'm gonna do that. Okay, now I'm gonna put this back on my stove since you know we've got that garlic going and it's gonna rise to double in size. Should be about two hours. All right. We're back and our garlic looks absolutely beautiful. If you wanna get a close up of this, oh yeah. It is amazing. I wish that you could smell how beautiful like this smells and the house smells so good. Ugh, this is like pretty much what the restaurant smells like all the time, I think, yeah. Um, so anyways, I'm gonna set this aside and our um, dough has risen. And because I put it on the back um, of the stove, it rose really fast. I think maybe like an hour and 15 minutes. It really wasn't two hours. So, you know, bread, it has a life of its own. You just kind of live with it, I guess. Let me see, is this hot? No, it's all right. Now I'm gonna preheat the oven to 450. Um, there it is. Okay, welcome to having a 1940s stove. I'm going to start it. Oh my God, I swear to God. One time I accidentally created a fireball when we had one like this. For real? Matt, what the heck? <sighs> like, is this this lighter? I feel like this lighter sucks. First the other off. lighter's in the little like junk drawer. Okay. It's okay. Okay. And here's my husband to actually light it. I know how to light this. Why did you, did you see him look at me like that? There you go, what do you want? Guess who's not gonna get real good bread? 450 plus. Okay, and then, mm -hmm, thank you. Back to the show. Um, we are going to preheat our Dutch oven. There are two ways that you can make this bread. So you can do a Dutch oven or you can do a pizza stone. Um, I'm gonna choose the Dutch oven because I feel, well, do people have a pizza stone more or a Dutch oven more? I'm gonna use the Dutch oven honestly because it's pink and I paid a lot of money for it. So I feel like it should be shown, but you do not have to use the Dutch oven. The difference is, is if you do it in a Dutch oven and you put the lid on, it creates steam and that's what makes your bread super crispy. And if you don't do it in a Dutch oven, then what you're gonna do instead is heat up the pizza stone and put a um, bowl of water in there to create that steam. So that's the difference. Okay. So we're gonna heat it up. Oh yeah, it's already getting hot. There it is. 
Now we're gonna bring our dough over here. I'm gonna get a little bit of flour. Okay, and there we go. Look at, you ready for the unveiling of the beauty? Look at that. You see how like beautiful all these little bubbles are? It's gonna make our bread have such a beautiful texture. So because we have all these beautiful little bubbles, like we don't want to knead it too much. We want that like to stay there. So um, we are going to sprinkle flour. I'm just kind of getting it and just folding it down so that I can take it out. Wow, look at it. that smeg mixer. Did such a great job of like getting the bottom not. Look, <laughs> there's like there's like a clump of flour in there. <sighs> okay, so <laughs> then because your mixer's crap, you got to get all <laughs> ah, chunks of flour off the bottom. It's okay. You know what? This is real life. So I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna fold it. Like I said, we don't wanna like over knead this. And I'm just gonna fold it like that. My Dutch oven's like shaped like an oval kind of. So I'm gonna kind of make it like an oval. Now I'm gonna put a piece of parchment and a piece of parchment this way. Okay. Now I'm gonna scooch this close. This might like rise. Well, once it's in there, it'll be fine. Okay, so then you're gonna get like a sharp knife or I've always wanted one of those like cute bread cutters, but this is a razor blade that I stole um, <laughs> from my husband. <laughs> but you can use a sharp knife. I just like really think a razor blade works great. I can't remember what those bread cutter things are. Is it like a bull? Something? It's something French. Um, you can cut it however you want to cut it. I think, I think I'm gonna cut mine, I'm gonna cut mine like my nonna. Her name was Maria, and she always cut an M. So, I'm gonna cut an M. One, two, three, M. Not bad. It looks like a W from your side. I'll switch it around. There's my cute little M. Oh my gosh. And my eyelash. <laughs> <laughs> this is heating up. I'm gonna give it like 10-ish minutes to keep heating up. And then I'm gonna get the stuff ready for the pasta. So that'll be good. So we're back and I'm gonna take the um, Dutch oven out. It's gonna be hot. My eyelash girl's gonna say, oh, your eyelashes are singed this week. Yeah. Okay. This feels nice and hot. Now, we're going to carefully stick our loaf in here. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no, Jesus. Okay. All right, not too bad, not too bad. I'm gonna lift you. Okay, there we go. She's pretty. She's good. Oh my God, I almost grabbed that lid without one of these. That would've been bad. Okay, now we're just gonna put the lid on. We're gonna stick it back in this oven. That's at 450 for 45 minutes. Is it at 450? It is not at 450. We're gonna raise it a little bit. So. <laughs> Matt's gonna be so mad too because the trim didn't come in for that window yet. So like the creepy noise is the balloon friends. Okay, so while this is baking, we are gonna get started on our um, pasta. And the first thing we're gonna do is make our sauce. Um, I already put 
some filtered water on the stove and once it comes to boiling we'll worry about that but um this is probably the most simple sauce that you can make so this is the brand that i like if i'm going to go to the grocery store and buy um pasta it's cento it's from Ita it's from italy it's an italian brand and it has no added citric acid. Like you don't want that added citric acid in there because it's gonna give you acid. And a lot of people say, oh, I can't eat Italian food because it gives me acid. Yeah, that's because you're eating like crap Italian food. Like real Italians don't put a bunch of stuff in their pasta sauce like that. So anyways, <laughs> this has been my TED talk slash rant about pasta sauce. And um, so we're gonna make like a real simple pasta sauce. So um, in our blender, we're gonna add our tomatoes. And a lot of people, a lot of people will um, use their hands and crush them, which is like a total like old school nonna thing. Didn't I get, yeah, I did get peeled tomatoes. Um, and these are peeled tomatoes. Feel free, you can like skip this step if you get crushed tomatoes. But I got peeled tomatoes. That's what we do at the restaurant is we use peeled. And this, of course, is not the marinara sauce that we use at the restaurant. I can't give you that recipe because my nonna would come down from heaven and stab me or hit me with a shoe or sandal or something. So this is just like a simple one that we would make for like Monday night dinner, that kind of thing. There's so many different ways to make sauce. And every family and every region is different. So. You wanna get all that goodness that you can in there. All the goodness. So I got two cans, two large cans. How many ounces is this? 28 ounces. So we got that in there. Now I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna take, yeah, three sounds good. Um, sprigs of basil. You wanna take the hard ends off. These little ones, they're fine, okay? Like, vegetables have a lot of nutrition in the stalks. <sighs> okay. Power, one. That's good. So we're gonna take this and I'm just gonna put it over here and reserve it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of our garlic in there, our garlic oil. That's probably two tablespoons-ish. And listen, is there ever too much garlic? I don't think so. There's my clock again. So cute. Um, this is, I'm gonna say, a quarter of a cupish of garlic. Okay, look, we're looking at like 10 cloves. This is the thing. If you're using raw garlic, obviously don't use this much because it's too much. When, well, it has a different flavor. When it's garlic confit, it gets the garlic gets so like jammy and sweet and amazing. So this, we're good, we're fine. Along with that, oh, it just got like real stormy outside. Um, along with that, I'm going to take just a couple leaves of basil and well, you can't really make a chiffonade, but I'm just gonna cut a little bit of it because I like to see little strips of basil. Here we go, it's heating up, our oil's good. I'm actually gonna add about, I'd say a good tablespoon of just olive oil so that it doesn't just like have garlic that's overwhelming. And since it's hot, we're gonna pour in this mixture. Yeah, baby, so good. That. Okay, then I'm gonna sprinkle the basil. And then, solid salt. Big pinch 
inches. That's probably good. Okay. Now we're just gonna cook our sauce. It looks beautiful. You know what else I'm gonna add? Um, sometimes they don't add this because of my kids, but who knows if they're gonna eat it today. We just had pasta. I'm gonna add some pepperoncino, which is um, red pepper flakes. Um, that's like a half a teaspoon. Just for a little bit of depth. Next, it looks like our pasta water is almost like quite there. Um, you wanna salt your pasta water salty like the sea, okay? Don't be like, hee, hee. no, we're gonna salt it. Like salt it, salt it. Here we go. That was like four big pinches of salt. Today we're gonna do pappardelle, which is, I really like it. Pappardelle has a lot of um, egg yolk in it, so it's really like hearty, kind of rich, yummy. So here it is. You can use any noodle you want. Uh, you know, fettuccine, spaghettini, penne, whatever you prefer. But I just was like, you know what? I'm in a mood. So here's my pasta. Pappadelli you wanna do kind of like at a real uh, gentle boil. So that's where we're at right now and I'm throwing it in. Oh, you know what? I should like time this with my bread. That would have been smart. Okay, Alexa, how much time do I have left on my timer? You have 24 minutes left on your 45 minute timer. That's like a lot of time. Okay, I'm gonna make broccolini because I feel like we need something green to kind of offset how many carbs we have. And I really wanted to make this like vegetarian so it was, you know, anything friend, it was just a friendly, um, dish. So let's make some broccolini. Okay, so um, sauce is on. It's on low um, behind me. And then we've got our broccolini. So olive oil. So we're medium heat. <laughs> medium heat. And we're gonna let this heat up for a sec. Um, broccolini is basically baby broccoli. It's, it's baby broccoli, it's delicious. It's like a little bit bitter. So um, it's personally one of my faves and my kids love it, which is weird because um, they're picky, um, but that's okay. So it feels like, yeah, our oil's there. Please don't leave. We're just gonna throw this in here. We're gonna add a little salt. Little salt. <laughs> so we're gonna put the lid on it and we're gonna let it just kind of steam a little bit. This is gonna go and this is just gonna steam it a little bit and then we'll add in um, our seasonings and our garlic and everything. And that'll be good. Okay. Now we can throw in our pasta. Here it is. And here we go. Two, three, four. Here we are, friends. So our pasta is gonna go for about 10 minutes. Um, I know that usually a package says like, you know, 12 to 13 minutes for a pound of pasta, but we're gonna cook it for 10 because we want it to be al dente, but it also still cooks in sauce. So that's what we're gonna do. And just so I'm on it, Alexa, will you set a timer for 10 minutes, please? Second timer. Perfect. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Broccoli's done. 
it's just perfect because it's just a little bit crunchy. I have al dente broccoli. Now what I'm gonna do is grab something to stir it with. This. Okay, this is garlic paste. Don't come at me because I forgot to keep garlic, raw garlic, <laughs> I can't feed it all, but I had. So this is garlic paste. I usually just keep it on hand, honestly, for making like Asian dishes when I make a sauce, but um, there it is. So we're gonna add that in. And then, I'm gonna add in the most incredible Calabrian pepper paste. Um, I actually love to make this during the um, summer months. It is like so good. So it's spicy. So I'm gonna use probably like a teaspoon. Stop timer, please. So, threw that in there. Let's go grab our pasta. Oh yeah. It feels like it's perfectly al dente. Okay, drain the pasta. My husband's gonna be mad because I didn't turn on the cold water first. There we go. It's off. Pasta's there. Finish this up. Oh yeah. Ooh, spicy, yummy. Oh yeah. Okay, this is all stirred up. Delicious. You know what? I'm gonna add just a little spoitz of water. Just a tiny bit. I want all this yummy garlic and peppers to go. Now that I have that done, you know what? I'm gonna throw this on a plate. Let's put our sauce back over here. Look how beautiful, like how beautiful does this sauce look? It is so delicious. <laughs> Let's turn that off before I light my butt on fire. Now, on top of this, I'm gonna add some on this one, I think I'm gonna do some um, Parmigiano-Reggiano. And this has been aged, I think this one was five years. So, you know, you want the good parm. Look, Rick, you can't ever have too much cheese. So, there's that. It's all done. That's maybe not the prettiest, but that's what I like. Now, we're gonna add our pasta. Don't trust myself. Yeah, it's perfectly salted too. Come on, friend. Into the sauce with you. Oh yeah. And like I said, we're gonna turn this off. It's probably gonna get quieter. Just kidding. Um, you, Want it, I turned it off because it's gonna keep cooking. So it's gonna keep cooking for a minute. So you wanna make sure. Okay, our bread is done. Oh, I'm so excited. Ooh. Here we go. I feel like I should say a prayer. I'm not, like, I don't know. Not Catholic or anything, but like, my family was Catholic one time. Okay, Lord Jesus, here we go. <gasps> oh my God. Is that not the most, like, beautiful? Holy Lord. <sighs> like, oh my God. It's perfect. It's, <laughs> this is what I have spent 
my life. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's, it's perfect. So perfect. Okay. I'm gonna leave it here for like, while I plate up and finish everything, um, just to kind of like let it cool down a little bit and it'll help it crisp up even more. But holy, like, I don't know. Holy Jesus, that looks so freaking good. Oh, that's broil. We're gonna go the other way. There we go. This, let me just put some of this. Oh my God, isn't that beautiful? And our bread's almost done, but I can't resist. Taking a bite. Oh, Jesus. Like my stomach is like, yeah, girl. Let's take a bite of this. Extra cheese. Is that like perfect? And do you see I have like this big? <laughs> I have this big old chunk of garlic. Okay, take two. I was just so excited about the garlic. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna like not shove an entire broccoli rob in my face on camera. But if we weren't on camera, I totally would. But here we go. Look at that. So good. Oh, heck yeah. Like, I feel like somebody who hates broccoli would love it. Oh. And then like right at the end, you get that like Calabrian pepper. It's so good. Cause it's like fermented chili. And it's not super spicy, it's flavorful instead. It's so good. Oh my God. Yeah. This is like the perfect Italian, like, I don't know. It reminds me of family night dinner so much. But I'm gonna clear this space and then we are gonna bust into our bread. I'm gonna make it like a little bit more over here so we can What I should have done is done it so I could dip it in the suku. That would have been so good. Oh God, it's so hot. Can you see it like st steaming? <gasps> Look it. Oh, it's so beautiful. Okay. Let me cut a piece. Maybe. Okay, I'm not cutting a piece, but look at how beautiful it is. It's got like the perfect Anyways, I'm gonna cut off a chunk off of this and then I'm gonna live my life happily. Oh gosh. Yeah. It's just like so perfect. Butter or garlic? Start with butter. <laughs> Starting with butter. I just rip a piece if I could, but it's so hot. Like, listen, okay? If I'm gonna live my life, I'm gonna live my life. Like, don't come at me like, hi, she just put half a stick of butter on one bite of bread. Yes, I know. Okay. Oh my God. It's like, crispy but so like perfectly soft and look at that and actually I'm gonna steal my butter knife and dude I'm just gonna crush one of these garlics oh, on here oh sweet fancy Moses here we go do you think Moses would have been fancy no dang it I feel like if I was like a leader of God, I'd want to be fancy. Like have a nice robe train or something. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Gotta make sure you get that balsamic. Here we go. I don't know if you could eat this if you were a leader of God. This is downright sinful. Oh 
oh my god. <laughs> Listen. Oh my god. Jonah. Dump it with an. Blah blah blah. Give me a friend. 